Welcome, I'm Pastor Tom Smith. You're about to hear a sermon that I gave during Lent 2016. Our Lenten theme was, You're a Superhero, Discover Your Spiritual Gifts. And this sermon is based on the book of Esther, focusing on the spiritual gift of leadership. Enjoy. Let us pray. Holy God, guide us uh, this evening uh, as we uh, hear uh, these words, as we sing these prayers, that our faith would be uh, deepened, that we would be awakened to the gifts that you've given us to build up the kingdom of God, to build up the body of Christ, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you haven't read the book of Esther, it's, it's really uh, actually a very well-written book filled with uh, political intrigue. Uh, A man named Mordecai is raising his cousin, Esther, who has been orphaned. Uh, She's a beautiful woman, and eventually the king sees her and uh, takes her as his wife, so she becomes queen. Haman, who is a high official in the government, asks the king if every time he goes out in public, could he make it an edict that people would bow down to him? And the king says, yeah, sure. And so... When Haman goes out, uh, he see, expects people to bow down, but Mordecai refuses. Mordecai, being a Jew, only bows to God. It upsets Haman, but Haman finds it beneath him to just kill Mordecai. So he goes back to the king and says, you know, there's some people in your country. They're not obeying your laws. I think they should all die. What do you think? King says, yeah, I've got laws. They're not obeying. Yeah, kill them all. So Haman sends out an edict that says, on the 13th day of the 12th month, all Jews, children, adult, you know, elderly, everybody is going to die. Mordecai gets this, tears his clothes, sends a copy of it to Esther through a slave saying, you got to go to the king. You got to tell him to not do that. You know, by the way, you're a Jew also, Esther. <laughs> Esther says, there's no way I can do that. You know the law. No one can go before the king unless the king has requested them, else they be put to death. So I can't do that. And Mordecai says this, Esther, for if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter, but you and your, family's fam- but you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. We're talking about the spiritual gift of leadership from a Christian perspective. This is an Old Testament text, but it lifts up this sense of of God working through people, providing places of leadership in order that life might happen, that people might be freed from injustice, tyranny, whatever it might be, so that the body of Christ from a Christian perspective might be strengthened and lifted up. And so because leadership is this huge topic, you know, thousands of books and all sorts of things, how do I, you know, in four and a half minutes speak about, you know, what that might mean for us? I thought I'd just lift up a couple of possibly differences between Christian leadership and other kinds of leadership. For the Christian leader who receives this gift of leadership, they realize and understand that the source of their power is God. That they don't have any illusion that it's because of their looks or charisma or anything else, that that God has called them to, to be in this position. And so their goal is not to serve others or to serve themselves primarily, but to serve God, to be faithful to this call to God, to serve God. Other leaders probably don't see that the power they have comes from God. Maybe they see that it comes from their own gifts. Maybe it sees that it comes from the people who voted for them. Sorry. Uh, but uh, uh, but the, they don't have a sense, right, that their power is a gift uh, that comes from God to be used to build up the body of Christ. And so the motivation for a Christian leader isn't to uh, build up his or her own kingdom, but rather to respond faithfully to God's call to build up God's kingdom, to build up the community of Christ, as opposed to seeking to build up their own kingdom through power, wealth, fame, whatever it might be. The Christian leader also, I think, has as its most powerful example uh, 
the leadership of Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke truth to power. It's an aspect, not actually the easiest thing for a Christian leader to do. Throughout the course of Scripture, those who speak truth to power end up in, say, a well, run out of town, or nailed to a cross. So the Christian leader, there's an aspect of sacrifice. Sacrifice of maybe put other, other opportunities, sacrifice maybe of your life, maybe sacrifice of some friends, because, it, because to follow this call from God requires you to speak the truth, and sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. And what is truth? Jesus is Lord. Right? We talked about that last week. So sacrificial leadership is, this, is the gift that the Spirit gives so that people might experience life and justice and freedom from those things that keep them from experiencing life more fully, like loneliness, hunger, poverty, illness. The Christian leader seeks to be faithful to God, serving others. So the leader doesn't lead from the front or the top or the rear, but for me, the Christian leader leads from the middle embedded in the community to which God has called them to serve, connecting with the community while being centered on God's call to provide leadership to that community so that the body of Christ might flourish and grow, sacrificing even the results of all the work that might take place, trusting that God's going to work through it. You know, when Jesus was on the cross, he cries out, God, why have you forsaken me? In that moment, his whole life has potentially come to nothing. He doesn't see the results of his sacrifice. In that moment, he's willing to give that up. And it's that ability to give that up, trusting that God is going to work, has worked, is working through his sacrifice that allows death and the principalities and powers to be defeated. So Jesus' sacrifice, it frees us all. The spiritual gift of leadership comes from God The power comes from God. And so those of us, actually all of us, who through our baptism have been named and claimed by God, live out our lives now seeking to respond to God's call of discipleship by offering leadership that is life-giving. And so what does that mean if you're a manager in an office or you're... uh, you know, in, in, a, in a place of power and government, is that you're always reorienting yourself to, to how God has called you to live out your, your Christian identity by showing mercy and compassion and seeking to speak the truth to power and whatever that looks like and wherever you're working calling out people who might be trying to get away with things, or maybe there's a, there's a sense of un- unfairness, maybe there's a popular employee who doesn't work that hard, but there's a less popular employee who works their tail off, but it's not right to lift up that person. I mean, you all know the various, you know, there's thousands of different examples. So as a Christian leader, your call is to see through that, to speak the truth, to name the truth, trusting that that possibly God has placed you there for such a time as this. May we respond faithfully like Esther, courageously even, trusting that God's working through us to bring about life. Amen. This is Pastor Tom Smith. Thank you for listening. The music that you hear is performed by Carrie Sherwood, our music minister and a gifted recording artist. You may find out more about Carrie and her music by Googling her, Carrie Sherwood. If you care to find out more about Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church, look us up on the web at trinitykenosha.org. Well, may you continue to explore your spiritual gifts, and as you discover them, may the Holy Spirit give you the courage and the faith to use them, and in using them for the body of Christ, 
experience more of who God created you to be. Till next time, God bless.